Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Becca and I upload videos all about how you can live a more ethical, sustainable, and intentional life. So for today's video, I thought we'd do something a little bit different, just something just for fun, and so I'm going to introduce you to my family. And by that, I of course mean my plants. I am a proud plant mother. I love my babies so, so much, and so I thought it'd be fun to do a video all about them. So I'm going to introduce you to them and share with you their names, how I care for them, and any tips I have on how you can make owning houseplants a little bit more sustainable because we are all about sustainability here on this channel. So if you want to see any of that, then just keep on watching. So let's start off with how I care for my plants. I honestly keep things really simple. I should definitely do more research, but I always get scared to change something up because I I don't want to hurt them and this seems to be working for them pretty well. So I water all of my plants once a week on Saturdays. This is just the day I picked to water them because you know I'm off from school and work so I have time to give them some care and I water all of my plants pretty thoroughly. I find that that is just what they prefer. They like a nice thorough drink and then lots of time to dry out um, completely before they get watered again. And so for the most part I water them once a week. Sometimes I cut this back to every other week especially for like my succulents when it's winter time because they don't need as much water when it's cold and dark outside and then for some other plants this one in particular I actually water more than once a week this one likes to be watered two to three times a week it is so so thirsty it starts to get droopy when it needs water so it's really easy to tell which is nice and this one is also a tropical plant so it likes humidity so I'll go in and mist it sometimes too just to give it a little bit of extra TLC. And then every now and then I also like to take days just to give my plants a little bit of extra care. So this is when I'll go in and I'll dust them because plants need to be dusted. If they have large leaves they're just going to collect it and this can uh, interfere with their ability to photosynthesize so you want to make sure you keep them dust free. I'll also you know repot any plants that need to be repotted, give them a little extra dirt if they need it, and also take this time to prune off any dead pieces. And as for where I keep my plants around my apartment, I tend to keep them in very sunny spots. I have a lot of my smaller plants lined up on my windowsills because they just absolutely love it, especially my succulents and my cacti really like it. But my other plants I've just kind of moved around and have figured out what they like. They all seem to be in pretty happy places right now and when I go in and water them I also make sure to rotate their pots so that way they don't end up growing just in one direction towards the sunlight. This ensures that they're able to grow very evenly and beautifully because they're getting even sunlight on all of their leaves. And so the only thing I don't really do is fertilize my plants. I don't give them any food. I'm just kind of scared that if I try it, it's going to kill my plants. So I've kind of just not really done it yet, but I know there's lots of natural plant fertilizers out there that you can DIY. You can like use, um, coffee grounds I think. You can like soak banana peels so I definitely need to give one of those a try. If any of you have experience with doing any of those methods please let me know how it worked in a comment down below. So that is everything about how I care for them so now let's move into introducing you all to them. So we're going to start with my biggest plants and work down to my smaller ones. So my biggest plant is probably my pothos. This is also known as devil's ivy and his name is Felix because I originally wasn't sure if it was a pothos or a philodendron because they're very similar. I thought Felix kind of sounded like philodendron. Even though I've now figured out he's a pothos, his name is still Felix. And I actually got this plant for free because a museum here in Richmond had this awesome exhibition. I actually went and saw it. It was so cool, but it was made out of plants. And so when the exhibition closed, they had to find something to do with all those plants. So I was able to get one, which was really cool. So he was a little freebie and I really, really love him. And then I also got him a little sister. This is a much smaller pothos and it is a golden pothos so it has tons of variegation on it and it's really really beautiful. So her name is Felicity. I thought it was cute. It kind of matched with Felix because I think of them as siblings so they're like a little pair. Next up I have my spider plant and her name is Sophie. I absolutely love her. She's so easy to care for and she has gotten so big. She actually started out super super tiny because I propagated her off of my mom's huge spider plant and that was my first tip I have for you all in terms of having sustainable plants is definitely to propagate or to get clippings from someone. This is just like turning one plant into two plants so it's not like you have to use any new resources or anything like that so I think it's a really sustainable thing to do. You can also make a great gift you know giving people plant clippings. I definitely want to do that in the future with 
some of my larger ones. Next up, let's move on to my aloe. This is an aloe barbadensis, which I believe is just the standard type of aloe. And so my aloe's name is Raphael because that makes his full name Raphael Barbadensis, similar to the ADA on SVU named Raphael Barba. I thought that was very clever when I came up with that back in the day and it's just kind of stuck. So this is one of my oldest plants. I got aloe because everyone says they're so easy. They're not. Honestly, I really don't think aloes are that easy. They can be quite finicky and it took me a long time to really figure out how he likes to be watered. It's that really thorough method and then letting it dry out works really well for aloes and he also likes a lot of sun but as you can see I think he's definitely on the rise. All of his leaves are really thick and squishy now and he's starting to have spikes again so I really think he's made a lot of progress and I'm very proud of him for that. And then I also have another aloe. So this one is a climbing aloe, so it looks a little bit different. And her name is Alex because I figured since they're kind of related, uh, we would just keep with the names from ADAs on SVU. So this one is also a little bit finicky. I didn't think it was doing very well for a while and I was kind of worried about it. But then it pushed out a baby little climbing aloe. So I realized it was just putting all of its energy into the baby. So I'm actually plant grandmother, not just a plant mom. Never thought I would be a grandma at age 20, but here we are and I am loving it, honestly. And this is another little tip for you. So I have my climbing aloe. She's actually right here off camera with me in a terracotta pot, but I didn't have one of those little saucer things for it. So what I use is just random lids from different types of jars. So they can be from peanut butter jars, pasta sauce jars, mason jars, whatever you have. If you just have a bunch of extra ones or ones you don't use the lid for, you can use the lid as a little saucer for your plants. And of course, this is just a great way to repurpose something you already have. Next up, I have a little snake plant. This one is also growing a baby, so I'm gonna have to do some research into how to like extract the babies from mother plants because then I'm gonna have a whole bunch more plants and it's gonna be really excited, but I don't wanna mess that up, of course. And my snake plant actually does not have a name. So if you have any ideas, please leave me a comment because she needs a name, y'all. She just, she does. Um, but snake plants are so, so easy. They're also called mother-in-law's tongues and they're like Sansevieria. Something along those lines is the scientific name, but I love my snake plant and she's doing great. She's just, you know, living her best life and I'm very happy for her. And next up is my peace lily, which is my plant right here that I was talking about earlier. She just stays here on my bedside table and I think she looks great there. And her name is Lily. I was not super clever with that one, but I think it's still a really cute name. And like I was saying earlier, she's great. She's just very, very thirsty. She keeps me on my toes because I'm always having to water her, but uh, you know, you're always willing to put in that effort for your children, so I find it to be still manageable. And this plant I actually got on clearance for only a dollar, I think. And that is my next tip for you all, is to check the clearance section of your plant stores because if these plants don't sell, unfortunately they're going to get thrown away, which is not only just so, so sad because that's a whole little plant baby being thrown away, but it's also not great for the environment because obviously that is just going to the trash and to a landfill and we all know that that is not a great situation. So definitely check out the clearance section and see if you can save a plant. This one actually wasn't even in bad shape at all. I think it just needed to be watered and they didn't realize that, but I have been able to rescue her. Last year she bloomed beautiful flowers. I'm hoping she will again this year, but she's had tons of new growth, even just in terms of her leaves. So she is doing so, so well. And I'm so glad that I was able to rescue her. Next up is my Pelea peperomiodes or however you say that. This is also known as a Chinese money plant, a pancake plant, a UFO plant. It has lots of different names because it has really unique leaves. They're shaped like circles and I think they are so, so cute. So this plant's name is Pepper and she also is growing a bunch of little babies. She actually was growing three just when I got her and then a couple of months ago she sprung up another one and they are just very adorable. So the babies have names too, of course. Although I need to give Alex's baby a name. I just realized that. So if you just have any plant name suggestions, drop them all down below because apparently I got a couple of plants I need to name. But my Palia's babies are named Poe, Pax, Penelope, and... Hold on. I'm gonna have to check my list. 
Pippa. Yes, Pippa. That is the fourth one's name. I know I sound like such a bad plant mom, but I just have so many, so I forget sometimes. But those are their plant names. And I keep this plant in a mug I used to use. I used to drink out of it, um, but I just have a ton of mugs. They're just one of those things I have so many of, so I decided to repurpose it as a plant pot. And I think my Palilia looks so beautiful in there, so that's another tip I have for you all, is just to repurpose items you already have as plant pots. They could be mugs, they could be bowls if you want to do like a little succulent arrangement or something like that. But also I just think it's great because you are using what you already have. Next up I have my umbrella tree and her name is Bella and she is just a sweet little gal. You know, we had a little bit of a rough patch a few weeks ago, but I think she's also recovering. And I got this baby as well as a couple others from a plant store here in Richmond called Tranges. And that's a tip I have for you all is just to buy from, you know, local plant stores if you can. I think that in general, buying from small local businesses is better than buying from huge corporations. So that is a tip I have for you all. Next up, I have another type of Palea. This is a Palea Glauca or Glauca. Not really sure how you say it, but her name is Glenda and I absolutely love her. I saw a plant like this in Lowe's once and didn't buy it and I regretted it so much so when I saw that they had them at Strange's I made sure to get one. I just love, you know, the trailing and vining plants. I think they look so so good and I love that the stems on it are kind of pink because as you all know pink is my favorite color so I just think that is really really beautiful. And another tip I have for you all is if you don't have you know, just items laying around you can use as planters is to try to thrift them. So this container I actually knew for a fact came from the Target dollar section. I remember seeing it in there years ago. Somehow I resisted buying it, but then I actually found it in a Goodwill uh, just a couple of years after that. And so I was sure to buy it. It doesn't have the original little wooden stand that I know it had at Target, but I still think it looks really really cute and probably the majority of the pots I have have been thrifted you know whether they are like designated plant pots like this one or terracotta pots or even I've thrifted more mugs and teacups to use as plant pots so lots of different options and I think they all just look really really good and of course they're also really inexpensive that way if you're able to thrift them which I love because we are always balling on a budget. And then next up I have two jade plants. Their names are Jade and Jane. So very, very similar, but these are another little duo I have. Jade plants are one of the easiest plants to take care of. I don't think you can kill one of these, honestly. My mom has one that she's had for years, if that serves as any evidence for you, because I love her, but she's not the best with plants. Uh, but she's been able to keep her jade plant alive. So these ones are just really hardy, definitely great if you're just getting into plants. I recommend going with a jade plant. And then next up I have a lot of different succulents. I have so many different ones, so we're gonna start off with one of my older ones. I believe it is an Echeveria, but I'm not certain on that, so don't quote me on that. But her name is Serena, and she's also in a thrifted pot. I love this one, it's pink, so you know that's a winner in my heart. But she's kind of gotten tall over the years so now she kind of curves back over because she can't really support her weight but she's still doing all right so I just kind of let her do her thing and grow however she wants to. Then I also have a jelly bean succulent which looks adorable. Its leaves are like little jelly beans and they all have like little pink tips which of course I love and this one I really just let her do whatever the hell she wants. Her name was Aurora, by the way. She originally had like two main stems and then one of them wasn't doing so well. So I'm currently trying to like save that and regrow it in another container. And then I have one of the original stems that is just so heavy. It's like completely horizontal. I have to prop it up on like a little candle holder. So you'd think it's not doing great, but then it's actually growing like probably five different like new plants off of itself so I guess she's doing all right like I said I just kind of let her do her own thing I don't know if I should like move her to a wide planter and just like let that all lay on the soil because she's growing air roots so those could just turn into normal roots I think but like I was saying I'm always scared to change things up with my plants and then kill them so just letting her be for now. Next up I have a family of four and they are named after another set of TV show characters. They're named after the Hallowell sisters from Charmed. My first one is just a really tall succulent. This one has kind of grown into like a little tree and so her name is Prudence of course. And then I have a Horthia succulent which was gifted for my roommate because she is one of those. And I'd always go into her room and pet it because they have this really nice texture and it's just it's really satisfying to pet it. So she got me one and this one is named Piper. Then I have a, another succulent and just kind of like another standard type of succulent that is Phoebe. And I have another named Paige because there's four if you've seen the show and uh, 
sorry that I just spoiled it if you have not seen the show, but the fourth one is named Paige and she was another one that I got on clearance and have luckily been able to rescue. And then I just have two more succulents and I've actually just kind of recently named these and I think I'm going to name them Daphne and Eloise because I just recently watched Bridgerton and I also just really like both of those names a lot. So I don't know exactly what type of plant Daphne is, but she's just in this cat mug. And unfortunately, when we were going home for winter break, we had a little bit of an accident on the road. We didn't actually get into a car crash. My sister had to slam the brakes really hard and my plant suffered a couple of injuries. So a couple of them, you know, lost a few leaves and stuff. But unfortunately the cat mug I had Daphne and the handle broke, but that's another tip I have for you all. If a plant pot breaks, all you need is a little bit of super glue and it can be brand new. So just once again, always repairing the things you have to really extend their lifespan. And then as for Eloise, I do know what type of succulent she is. She is a bear cactus, I think is the name, or it's barefoot, something like that. But basically their leaves kind of look like the shape of a paw and they're also fuzzy and they're just really, really cute. My sister had one of these and I absolutely had to get one and I love it because it is fuzzy and little and adorable. And then finally, I just have one more plant to share with you, and that is my cactus named Junior. He is one of my oldest plants, and he is just a little fella. He's never really grown any bigger, but I still love him. I think he's a cutie, and he's looking a little bit shrunken right now, but I think he just kind of gets like that in the winter, so when the summer rolls around, he should get all nice and squishy again and be looking his best. So that is all of my plants. I definitely have quite a few, and I still want to get more, of course. I would love to get some bigger plants like a bird of paradise or a fiddle leaf fig tree. A fiddle leaf fig tree is like my all-time like dream plant. I want to get one so bad. I just think they look so so good but I would want to get a big one of course and while I'm still in college and moving around and stuff it just doesn't really seem like a good idea right now and obviously I want to make sure that I can care for any plant that I bring into my home so gonna hold off on that for now. Definitely leave me a comment down below, you know, with any plant care tips you have, any name suggestions, and maybe tell me a little bit about your plant family and how they're doing. But that is really going to be all for today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe and turn on the post notifications down below. That just ensures that you don't miss any future uploads. And I want you guys to keep coming back and join this little corner of the internet. So definitely make sure you do those things. You can also go follow me over on Instagram. I always have it linked down below and I actually just started posting reels. I know I'm pretty late to the game, but uh, I'm really excited and I'm having a lot of fun with them so far and I have a lot more ideas for what to make on reels in the future. So if you like reels, definitely go follow me over on Instagram. But that is going to be all for today's video. I hope you all are having a wonderful, beautiful, fantastic day and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.